Hey right, guys, how we doing? So we'll get back on track a little bit with some of our basic battle tactics. So this one's probably long overdue. We're going to talk about the feigned retreat. So the feigned retreat is, it's extremely simple. So what the feigned retreat is, basically in its most simplistic sense, is it's that we retreat away from an enemy with the goal of getting him to follow us so we can then ambush him or in some way attack him. So very, you know, simplistic to describe it but now there's kind of a couple ways um a couple ways that this happens or a couple ways to do it so we can kind of think of uh you know a more like kind of traditional approach to it be let's say you know we kind of got our battle going here so our forces are the black so we have an ambush so we have a unit set up already along the route of retreat with the idea of retreating so we engage our enemy here in battle enough to get them to commit and then we basically you know we essentially try to make it look like we're panicking, uh, look like we're routing, and we start to kind of fall our way back here, maybe even fall back in kind of relative disorder with the goal of getting an enemy to follow us, but also to not maintain good unit cohesion and discipline. So we don't want them to follow us like in perfect formation and cautiously advancing what we want them to do is instead of maintaining this good order this good formation we want it to start to look like this we're like more like individual parts are kind of starting to pursue more individual parts of our force so then as we start to draw them in now they get a little bit more strung out now it doesn't start to look so much like a cohesive well-formed formation now it starts to look like something that you can attack um you know, a little bit more piecemeal, but also when they're just not expecting it. So in this particular case, on their flank or just in a location where they're not expecting it. So that's one way um, to kind of do it. And then another way to set it up is to not really have an entirely separate force, but is to basically have the force that I already have arrayed. And then basically at a predetermined time, our force starts to fall back. We start to draw the enemy back with us. Again, hopefully getting them to kind of lose a little bit of cohesion and that another predetermined signal, our forces basically turn around and then re-engage the enemy. Again, hopefully drawing them out of the formation stuff. So a couple of really good examples of this that are in sort of two like completely different um, you know, methods. So we think of like 1066, the Battle of Hastings. So nobody really knows exactly how this came to be. But, um, you know, essentially, as the Normans are attacking, you know, uphill and are not really having a lot of success, the Normans have a very well-balanced force of, you know, infantry, cavalry, and archers. Um, but they're not, uh, you know, the, they're, they're dealing with the Anglo-Saxons who are essentially entirely an infantry force and occupying high ground along the route of march. But eventually, the... Normans start to fall back down the hill. And as they fall back down the hill, finally one of these times the Anglo-Saxons break ranks and chase them. And so then the Normans basically turn around on them and then attack them as they're out of formation and, you know, obviously defeat them and, uh, you know, the Normans essentially, you know, go on to complete their conquest of, of England, uh, you know, eventually with that. Now, we don't know if it was intentional at any point or if it was just strictly a like seizing the moment kind of thing there's thoughts on both then we have another example which is a more classic pre-plan so we have the battle of uh in 1260. um so this takes place uh between the uh mamluks and the mongols so we think about 1260 so 1258 the mongols burn and destroy so they sack baghdad and it's one of the most destructive events in the entirety of human history they think they might have killed a million people like just like nobody knows like if you have to stab everybody to death or burn them to death in their homes like you just have like to think about a million people is an unbelievable number but so we're two years removed from that so kitbuka uh mongol is basically farting around that area still uh dealing with uh you know so Baibars is the uh commander of the mamluks so uh, when he finally thinks he's ready to deal with the Mongols, essentially what he's doing the whole time along, you know, around the Mediterranean coast and things there, uh, you know, in the Levant area, is that basically they're just, they're just pecking at him, picking at him, hit and run, messing with them, trying to get them, uh, you know, to finally commit. And then he sets up an ambush in the highlands, basically a little bit further in and along the road. He finally 
does a completely orchestrated feigned retreat, attacks the Mongols. They fall back as the Mongols, you know, Kibuka makes a, just an utter complete error, sends his entire force in there. The Mamluks basically emerge out of the wooded, you know, highland areas and assault them and just completely destroy them. So again, those are kind of the two main ways to do it. One is totally pre-planned and also has a force set aside specifically to bring them into it. Another way to do it, which can be pre-planned, is to basically add a signal, is to disengage and potentially to purposely make it look like a route, and then another signal to basically turn around, um, uh, you know, and kind of, uh, you know, engage them that way. And so an easy way to think of this is, uh, I always kind of like this comparison with combat sports. You know, one thing that we talk about when it comes to striking arts is you need to pull an opponent out of his guard. Uh, so one of the ways to pull an opponent out of his guard is, you know, if he's got his guard up around his head, is you can go up and you can jab him or you can physically pull his arms out of the way and things like that to open up areas to strike. Or you can kind of strike, strike, strike and retreat, get him to attack you. Obviously, he can't keep his hands up to defend himself here. So as his hands come down throwing strikes, now he's open. Um, you know, very similar, uh, you know, kind of in that regard at the personal level versus the uh, combatives level. But again, feigned retreat. <laughs>